American Trail. Chapter 9, The California Gold Rush. I'll be in San Francisco and then I'll look around. And when I see the gold lumps there, I'll pick them off the ground. I'll scrape the mountains clean, my boys, I'll drain the rivers dry. A pocket full of rocks bring home, so brothers, don't you cry. Oh, California, that's the land for me. I'm a-going to Sacramento with a wash tub on my knee. Pretty good, Dad, pretty good. Hi, folks, this is Lenny Crosby. Guess you know my dad. <laughs> we'll move over a bit there, will you, son? I give the old man a little room, huh? Why, you bet. Say, Dad, I kind of went along with that song. Well, boy, that was number one. Did you know that? Number one on the hit parade back in 1849. The days of the gold rush? Yeah. Long about the time California was ready to latch on to the U.S. Ah, they were the real rugged days. Yes, they were, Lynn. So they were. But California's come a long, long way since then. Yeah. All our big cities, farmlands, industries. More to it than that, too, boy. I like to fool around with the idea that California is sort of, sort of a digest of American history. I guess it is, Dad. So much happened in such a short time. Well, look at here. By the time California was ready to spring along with the rest of the U.S., it had a lot of catching up to do. Sure caught up, though. All right, then. That's what I mean. Now, look. You know what I like to do here? I got a yarn about a young fellow your age who was around during the gold rush days. You want me to unwrap the story, boy? Go ahead. As I recall, his name was Barney. Barney? Barney. Yeah, Barney Brooks. This is how he told his story. I'll never forget it. That day we dropped anchor in San Francisco Bay. It was so foggy we couldn't even see the land. Then sailors started deserting the ship. The captain up on the poop deck yelling at them as they rowed away. Come back, you swamp! Come aboard, you mutinous dogs! I love every man, Jack! I love Mr. High Dog, you swamp! They never came back. They were after gold. Just about a year before that, gold was discovered in the Sacramento Valley on Captain Sutter's land. My dad and I heard about it back in Boston. Everybody was wild. Everybody wanted to rush right out to California and get rich. One night, my dad said, Barney, old fellow, we're going out west. We'll get enough gold to buy some land and some cattle. A couple of days later, he left, went overland. I came out by way of Panama with some other people. One of them was a young school teacher, Miss Taylor, Virginia Taylor, a friend of mine. It seemed years before we got to San Francisco. But at last the fog cleared. Miss Taylor and I stood on deck looking at the coast and waiting for my dad to come for us. Barbaric looking country. It's wild, all right. Those mountains. Look at them. They must be the Sierra Nevada. Where Captain Fremont explored. My dad came aboard. He looked grand. Mexican sombrero, red shirt, big, strong sunburn. Spilling valuable time here, waiting for this boat. Oh, I thought we'd never get here, Tom. So did I. Dad, did you find any gold? Have you been to the gold field? Yes. Uh, give me the bag. Let's get ashore. I'd never seen my dad like that before. So jumpy. We went ashore. What a place. Crowds. Every language in the world. Hundreds of tents that all over the hills. No real streets. Just mud pads, shacks, huts. A few regular houses. One was called the Parker House. Next door to a gambling place, the El Dorado. Dad had found us rooms at the Fremont Family Hotel. I was unpacking in his room when he came in with Miss Taylor. There's a fella here, Brannon, Sam Brannon. You ought to see him, Virginia. He's got pull in the town. Uh, will he help me with the... Uh, He'll my... be glad to see you. Sam's civic-minded. 
Now, you tell him you want to build a school out here, and he won't be able to do enough for you. Then I'll certainly see him. Oh, here. I want to show you something. Barney, quit what you're doing. What is it, Dad? Here. In this drawer. Now, wait a minute. Here. Catch, Barney. Oh! Go, Dad! It's gold! <laughs> Open it. Have a look. Yeah, here's another bag. Tom, that... That's gold? More than $40,000. And I'm going back for more. Oh, boy! Going back for more? Tom, I thought you... You said... Thought what? You were going to buy land and cattle. I want my share of the gold, Virginia. Dad, I'm going with you to the gold field. No, son, I'm sorry. Oh, please, Dad, please let me... I said no. How many more times? Uh, I'm sorry, son. I didn't mean to shout. That's all right, Dad. Next morning, Miss Taylor went to see Sam Brannan. He was a newspaper publisher. She took me with her. Mr. Brannan was sure a fiery character. Ma'am, they've sure gone haywire in this town. They all think they're going to get rich. Maybe a few will, and the rest will have their hearts broken. I've seen men destroying themselves up in the gold fields. I suppose so. Now, this town was built for 800 people, ma'am. In six months, we've seen 10,000 people pour into it. We've got a criminal population here. Thugs, hooligans, scum of the earth. It's to be expected. But not condoned. And I'm for hanging or shooting every known criminal. When a man gets to be a menace to decent people, get rid of him, I say. Kill him like a mad dog. If the law prescribes it. The law. Isn't there any? There will be. We're organizing the vigilance committee. Now, ma'am, for better or for worse, California's soon going to be a state. With all this gold here, it's going to be mighty important country. But the decent folk here have got to make it a fit place to live in. I want to do my share, Mr. Brannan. I want to help establish a school system. Proud of you, ma'am. Good and proud of you. Proud to see a decent American girl come out here. Only it's no place for you yet. I'm here now. You got any folks out here? No, nor in the east. I have no one but myself. Proud of you. Little lady, we'll build your school. We'll build a church. But first the scum's got to be cleaned out. Now, ma'am, I hate criminals, and I hate hooligans. I hate them worse than poison. Don't you, Sonny? Yes, sir. Tom Brooks's boy, huh? You know my dad? I know him. He fought Indians in the Black Hawk War, sir. I know he did, son. He'd be good for your vigilance committee. Yes, well, we could sure use a man like him. When we got back to the Fremont Hotel... Dad was just about going out. He had a strange look. I had a feeling something had happened. I was out. They knew I was out. And they came here. Who? What is it, Tom? Bandits. Big Jack Fisher's gang. Came here in broad daylight. Took everything in sight. They got my gold. The gold? You stay here till I come back, son. Dad, go to Mr. Brannan and the Vigilance Committee. Tom, Tom, please wait. This is the Gold Coast, Virginia. Every man makes his own rules. Every man's his own judge and jury. It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> Dad went out. At first, I couldn't think. It was the look on Dad's face. Miss Taylor, he's going to look for those men. Yes. I'm going to Sam Brannan for help. You stay here, Barney. Oh, what's come over your father? He mustn't. He can't take the law into his own hand. Bonnie, Bonnie, stay there. I stood there for a minute. Then I ran out. I kept running and running until I saw my dad and caught up with him. Dad! Go back, son. Dad, I'm scared. Go back, I told you. Please, Dad, please! I said go back! first time Dad ever hit me. I just stood there. I saw him going to the El Dorado. I... I started running again. Bonnie! Bonnie! Come back here! I heard Miss Taylor calling. I looked back once. She was with Sam Brannan and some other men. But I kept running until I got to the El Dorado. When I first got to the door... Men and women were gambling, and the place was in an awful uproar. Then suddenly...
Suddenly, everybody was awful still. All you could hear was a lot of breathing. And my dad, walking slowly towards another man who stood near a table. It was like watching a tiger. Dad didn't even draw his gun. And the bandit seemed like he was frozen. I've come for my gold. Fisher, I said I've come for my gold. Fisher, I'm counting three. I don't know why I did it. I saw the bandit's hand move towards his gun. I didn't want my dad to get shot, and I ran between them. This is the bandit fire. Barney! I heard the shots. I felt the hot pain in one shoulder. Then there was another voice. Don't move, anybody. I'm Sam Brannan. This is the Vigilance Committee. We're getting some law and order around this town. Barney. Barney, speak to me. Get a doctor, quick. Next thing I remember, I was in my bed. Miss Taylor was standing there with my dad and Sam Brannan. He's all right, Tom. Son. Did you get your gold back, Dad? I don't want it, Barney. I don't want to see it. I just want you to get well. I'm all right. All the things I ever taught you. All the things that matter. I was turning my back on them. Respect for law and order. Barney, uh, your dad's ashamed. Dad, are you going to join Mr. Brannan's vigilance committee? He already has, Barney. Gee. It was grand watching San Francisco grow into a big city and my dad helping. Hundreds of ships sailing in from all over the world. More and more settlers coming, building homes, schools, churches. California getting to be a state, and me feeling California was just as much as my home as Boston had been, because it was all part of the United States now. Hi, folks. This is Crosby again. That was quite a story, Dan. All right, Lindsay, but don't go thinking it's all wrapped up. No. No, I guess it isn't. It's your story now, boy. Yeah, I guess it is. Yours and all the other kids across the country. You're the ones who'll be carrying the ball pretty soon, this this law and order deal. You know, a few people in this country and around the world are trying to break it up. Don't you guys let them do it. It'll be up to you to see that these United States keep moving along in the good old American way. Don't worry, Dan. It's important stuff, my fine young friend. I know it, Dad. We all know it. All of us. Fine, fine. Now you're on the ball, boy. Our thanks to Bing Crosby and his son, Lindsay. This has been the ninth chapter in the story of the American nation, brought to you by the Ladies' Auxiliary to the Veterans of Foreign Wars. Another story to make you proud of this great country of ours as we follow the American Trail. <laughs>